Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In the previous video I offered some combinations of NASA's Space Launch System and SpaceX's Super Heavy, the two large rockets that are either in service or about to be in service uh, imminently. And well, it was an effort to bring the space community together in hilarity I guess or something like that, but they weren't really that bad. They weren't really that bad as far as designs are concerned, but there was of course the objection that we were not reusing Super Heavy, it was designed to be reused, and so we have this option from Peckham who uh, offered it during live streams on Twitch, and I decided to try it out. So here we have Super Heavy and SLS side by side. Super Heavy is the booster for SLS. SLS does not have its solid boosters, though maybe it could get some benefit from having those too. I mean, we'll, we'll just see how it works with this version. Uh, this version should not bring Super Heavy so far out that it can't return, and it should provide more payload capacity to SLS than SLS would otherwise have. It's more efficient. It's a whole lot larger altogether than the normal SLS rocket. In fact, nearly two times the mass of the pad of the SLS rocket. And in order to really make this juicy, if you will, uh, we have instead of the normal RL-10 engines or the J2X from Constellation, we have a vacuum RS-25 because that was provided by Realism Overhaul and it has three ignitions. So it's heavier than the J2X, but it's also more efficient than the J2X. And it's just sort of nicer to have the same engine up there as we have at the bottom of the SLS. I think it'll make things a little bit simpler overall. So we have the RCS on there and I haven't painted this tank, this is just a test. If it turns out to be a good idea, we will paint it and make it all nice looking. And uh, yeah. We have a payload up here, just the normal AF gas, and it's 100 tons, or nearly 100 tons. And we're trying to get this 100 tons directly to the moon. So this is not going to be a low Earth orbit test. This is 100 tons to the moon, and we are going to try to reserve the fuel in Super Heavy so that it can return. I'm going to reserve uh, at least 10%. I'm going to go with 18 seconds of fuel. So that should be pretty good. I mean, of course, if we could do a drone ship landing, that would be nicer, but um, Super Heavy is huge. So we'll see. I have decided to call this particular rocket Stress. The first one was called Desperation, the second Tension, and it seems a little bit stressful. And speaking of stress, of course, we would have to strengthen Super Heavy. Maybe have to strengthen SLS? It depends. I'm not entirely sure. It's pretty darn strong, and it is meant for larger boosters than it currently features. So th this side might not be too bad off, but Super Heavy might need to be strengthened in this scenario. We are still only having the engines that currently gimbal on Super Heavy gimbal, so the outer 20 do not. That's important too. There's a limit to how long we can have this attached. We'll see. Okay. So let us bring it outside and see how it goes. It's a little bit bouncy there. We're on pad 39B in this case. And well, it's a little bit iffy. I did test it during streams, but we didn't get a particularly good result yet. So hopefully this will be the first definitive results, the first definitive result, but it's sort of wobbling. The Delta V figures don't really help us. In order to send a payload to the moon, normally we would estimate 12,500, but then Super Heavy has to reserve some propellant in order to come back, right, the 18 seconds. So it seems like we have way too little, but in examination, it seemed like we could carry maybe 100 tons. So that's what I'm going with. I believe we can launch right now. The relative inclination is not too, too bad for a throw to the moon. Uh, I normally wouldn't launch like this, but I think we should go because I don't know if it's going to be stable enough for time warping. Uh, we are going to make sure to roll a zero and have that get started and throttle up ignition. And we're igniting the RS-25s first, and then the Super Heavy, and then launch. So we do have a little bit of a sidestep. 
and you can see the unique plume situation where the gimbling engines are pointing through the combined center of mass and it's using about half the pitch here. Of course Super Heavy is way way heavier than the core of SLS but then again the combined mass of the boosters for SLS is also heavier than the core of SLS. So that's not entirely unusual. Often the boosters are heavier than the core, it's just that in this case Super Heavy is also wider, it has a greater diameter than the core of SLS. I think I might have gone too steeply though. I don't know why there's this sideways component because we're, we're basically going straight down like this. But yeah, we're really taking advantage of all our pitch authority here. Okay, Super Heavy Engine's out, and set. And I did put separation motors, oops, on Super Heavy. Sorry, I, I know SpaceX doesn't like the solid motors, but... I don't have little pistons or whatever they might have thought to use for that, so... Okay, I think this will be a good time to separate the fairings as well, since the thrust weight ratio is pretty low. And for some reason it stopped tracking this, so let me get it back on. Uh, I'm correcting the inclination a little bit late, I should have done that right away. Okay, and set and ignition. And we have the RS-25, and well, it's just about what we need for the moon. We'll see how it goes. Okay, that's us in orbit with 3,219 meters per second, which I think is enough to get to the moon. Let's see. But of course, we do have this 15 degrees. Uh, then again, it seems like our ascending node can hit the moon on the opposite side there. So let's see. That'll be good enough as far as the periapsis is concerned. So let's just formalize this, make the burn, and demonstrate that we can get 100 tons to the moon with this. Of course, if we strengthen super heavy, that'll cut into it, but it won't be a one-to-one -one thing. Like, it, if it takes uh, 20 tons extra mass to strengthen super heavy, then that'll be much less than 20 tons because that's still a booster stage, and the impact on the payload is much less than that. We do end up dumping the four RS-25s at the bottom, uh, but if we used my shuttle mice, we could avoid that, and they could come back down potentially. And even this could theoretically be recoverable if we want to add the extra mass and take the mass out of our lunar payload. 100 tons is a lot of lunar payload to work with if we want to do something else with the rest of the rocket. And this is 100 tons direct to the moon, and the mass of the overall rocket on the pad is not that much different from Super Heavy with uh, Starship on top. It's still about 5,000 tons. It's 5,200, so it's not unreasonable if you've got a pad that can accommodate that. Okay, and ignition. J2X wouldn't be a bad choice here either, if we had it, but we definitely have RS-25s, so I went with the RS-25 even though it's heavier. Okay, we can do the rest with RCS. Uh, we can certainly make it, we had about 97 left, that assuming residuals as well. So there we go, sort of polar, it could probably be polar. But uh, to be, well, actually we're not too far from the timing for the ISS, we'd have to pull it away from the moon. Right now it's crashing into the moon, which, you know, it's not generally a good thing. But, yeah, more or less in line with that ISS around the moon, so not too bad. Okay, so there we have it. 100 tons to the moon with this combination of SLS and Super Heavy. Of course, individually they cannot manage this, but combined they can. And of course with a uh, newly revamped upper stage, but yeah, interesting to note. And with that result, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.